Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan um, coming to you here to talk about May 2nd um, MSI Tournament League of Legends Esports. Um, I took a little break um, after the spring break, uh, spring split um, had ended. Um, we did not have, you know, really that many great DFS slates. Um, but now we have a major mid-season invitational MSI tournament um, that's coming up, that's starting tomorrow. Um, we have some uh, play-in stage uh, games starting tomorrow, best of threes. So I'm excited to start making these videos again for the MSI tournament. Um, as I mentioned on the True DFS Discord, I plan to uh, make nightly videos uh, before each of these slates. I presume that it's going to be a two game slate like the one tomorrow um, from, for, you know, for the rest of the tournament until we hit the main qualifiers or main uh, main stage uh, phase of the tournament uh, where we will have um, some more, uh, you know, diverse <laughs> bigger size tournaments or slates, I guess, rather. Um, so I think that's probably what it's when it's going to happen. I don't exactly know how they're going to do it. Um, it might be a two get a two day slate. Um, and unless it's just going to be a showdown showdown, um, I hope not. So we'll see, uh, for what it's worth. I think it's going to be an interesting tournament if you are a League of legends fan, so without any further, you know, uh, without any further ado, um, let's dive in. So tomorrow we have a DFM um, versus PSG Talon and then Loud, LLL they call it, um, and then versus, uh, they, them versus G2. So DFM, uh, so before I go any further, um, if you guys have any questions or if you guys want me to change up any format or want me to dig into some um, specific metrics or specific matchups, specific like, you know, parts of League of Legends DFS or League of Legends in general, uh, please, please let me know at DFS Chan um, on Twitter. Um, otherwise, yeah, I mean, if you um, hope you guys like these videos, hopefully it's helpful for DFS. Um, I have heard from previous videos for the spring split. It's been very helpful and obviously previous years as well. Um, that's why I keep making these videos when I can. Um, I was a little busy with my main job, <laughs> full-time job, um, the last couple weeks, and I, it, it kind of worked out with timing. Um, but yeah, I mean, you guys don't need to hear about my my excuse. So here, uh, let's dive in. If you um, please hit the like button below or subscribe to our channel if you are new uh, to our videos, um, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. All right. DFM versus PSG. This is the toss-up matchup, so I'll I'll probably delve into this uh dive into this one second. The first matchup is G two versus uh Team Loud basically. Um, Loud is from Brazil, and G two you guys know they're from Europe, EU. Uh, they I guess they call them EMEA now. Um, so Loud, let's talk about them first. So first of all, I mean, just let's just be honest. I think G two is gonna be win. Uh, G two is gonna win. They should win, um, at least in the best of three. You know, best of three, better team tends to win. I mean, best of one, maybe Loud can pull up an upset based on, you know, picks and, you know, picks and bans and all that, um, different strategy. But, you know, G2 should win in a best of three. I mean, just based on the roster, straight up skill level, G2 is superior to them um, by far. So, Team Loud, um, they're from Brazil, and Brazil likes to skirmish. And I'll talk about this here in a little bit at the end of the matchup analysis, but this matchup should produce a lot of kills, in my opinion, more kills um, than the DFM versus PSG that we'll talk about. Um, but Team Loud, I mean, you might, you guys might be familiar with some of these names. Ten owns in the mid lane, probably the most like familiar sounding name guy. On this team, Croc, he was all right last year. Robo, you know, he's been there for a while in the top lane. Um, and route and C, I mean, C, C, CEOs or CEOs, depending on how you call it, in the support position. Yeah, we've seen him before. 
Um, but you know, like Team Loud, the Brazilian teams in the world tournament like this, and in the international tournament rather, um, they have fared poorly. Um, I think you know, in CBLO or in Brazil, it's really based on team fights. Like whoever wins team fights, they love to skirmish, they love to team fight. Um, that is their strength, and that in itself can win. Uh, maybe a game or two in a tournament like this if they hit on all cylinders. But it's in terms of like macro game and just playing smart and also G2, having all sorts of different strategies or what they're known for. I mean, you know, G2 is one of those teams that can win in so many ways. Um, I do think their strength lies with Broken Blade, Yike, and Caps in the top half of the map. I think who if, if they do well, I think they tend to win most of the times. Now G2, they won the spring the in the LEC in Europe, they had this like what's a strange uh split between the winter split and the spring split um in the league. And they won, they ended up winning this the winter split like few several months ago. And then they ended up doing poorly in the most recent spring split. Um, I think Mad Lions ended up winning, ended up beating G2 three to two um, in that tournament uh, post uh, playoffs for the spring split. But G2 has been up and down most recently. So, yeah, I mean, they're volatile and they have not performed. They're not in form. But at the same time, they still ended up winning the, the winter split um, earlier. And this is they had plenty of time to prepare Four teams like Team Loud, and I just feel like G2 is going to get it together. Um, they have what it takes, to be honest with you, to make a run in the, in the MSI. Um, but, you know, the first step is to overcome Team Loud and their team fighting abilities, right? So I do think G2 can, you know, uh, um, withstand um, that kind of team fighting um, tendencies from Team Loud. I do think G2 should win. Um Pretty handedly, I think it's gonna be a two to one or two to zero. Actually, two to one. Um, I do think Team Loud can pull this off if they get an early game advantage. But Yike has been so good, in my opinion, compared to um, other European junglers, except for maybe Elioya and then maybe um, Fanatics jungler. Um, so I do think G two should win here. Um, like I said, I'm not I'm not gonna waste too much time on it. I don't think. Um, as you can see, they lost to Mad Lions here in the spring playoffs. Um, I think three to two. Yeah. And then let's see what Team Loud did. Team Loud, it looks like they played a lot of games. Um, they ended up playing against PNG again, Pain Gaming, throughout the playoffs. Um, I think those were the top two teams in the playoffs anyway. So, and then I, I just wanted to see quickly see. Um, their stats um, in Europe. So let's take a look at that real quick. Um, spring groups, let's, because that's probably the bigger sample size that we can see um, for G2. And then I'll take a look at Team Louds um, in their, uh, you know, league as well. So 0.99 CKPM, like I said, that's pretty fast. I mean, that's really fast, actually. Um, jungling i mean you see 58.8 percent that's just like stands pops off right like that is way above the average over 50 percent um yike has been amazing like i said um he will be um at the core of my lineups probably um yike is gonna be really really good i think um this team is gonna feed off of yike's advantage in the jungle um, lane control, it's been okay. It was okay. I mean, this was like back in April, but still, um, let's see, goal difference at 15 minutes is pretty good. So this is the issue, right? Like early game was good, but the mid game, mid to late game, they struggled a bit. Caps, you know, constantly wanted to make some play plays, but he's just not in good form to do that. Um, along with some miscommunications with his teammates that we saw in the LEC playoffs, so I think that will be an issue against Team Loud, um, but maybe the only issue, and I think G2 should be able to overcome that with given the time um, they had for preparation. Um, but I, this is like popping off, like 58.8%. Come on now, like that is so, so good. That is the top. 
here in the spring groups. Um, even though they struggle in the mid to late game, I do think that should be enough for G2 to overcome the team fighting liking um, Team Loud. I do want to see one thing, um, LEC spring playoffs. I think they played five games and whether they actually had a pretty decent jungle control person, and they did. So um, it's unfortunate they lost to Mad Lions. Um, I think they just had a bad series there um, in, in the best of five. Um, I do think G2 should be able to handle Team Loud. And I mean, like I said, every single lineup, every single matchup, I mean, um, even Hansama and Mikix, Mickey versus Route and CEOs. I mean, G2 has an advantage in every single lane of matchup. So I do think Yike is has the biggest advantage over Croc, in my opinion. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. So let's look at Team Brazil's. Like I said, I think it should be the top two pain gaming and team loud. Um, that should have CB low. Where is that at? CB low. So that's the playoffs. And I want to look at the regular spring split. That, Like I said, that's, that's the one that I typically look at, given the bigger sample size. Jungle control percentage, Team Loud, 51.4%. Um, so it's not as good as G2 um, comparatively and respectively in their region. Um, like I said, 50.4% um, lane control. Um, 56 first to three towers. So they're not like popping off, even at goal difference at 15, uh, 15 minutes, it's at minus 11 compared to like other teams that um, lost to them. 12.1 mid to late game uh, rating, which is pretty good. Um, early game rating. Let's see if there's, yeah, they're in top three, mid to late game rating, top four. So they're not like even popping off in their own region, right? And going up against the juggernaut from LEC. Yeah, I mean, I think G2 should handed, handedly win, easily win. All right, so Jet, that's G2. Um, but the, the next matchup in DFM versus PSG, um, that's going to be a closer matchup. And I still haven't decided who I'm going to pick to win in my DFS lineups. Obviously, you want to stack, you know, the players from the winning teams. That is the core uh, foundation of League of Legends DFS. If you are new um, to playing League of Legends DFS, um, you want to pick players from the winning teams. And obviously, that depends on your match predictions. So let's look at DFM versus PSG. Um, I wanted to look at their rosters, just like I did for the other matchup. All right. So DFM... Sorry, DFM versus PSG. All right, DFM comes from uh, Japan. They made some noise in the World's Tournament last winter. Winter. Winter-ish. Fall, winter. Um, when I went to the tournament. And then PSG, um, they were okay. Um, they're from Hong Kong, I believe, exactly. Um, they're from the, you know, both are from the Asian regions. Um, but not from China or Korea. So that's why they're playing in these um, play in matches. DFM has um, exported <laughs> their top laner, Evi, um, to the LEC, as you guys you know, know, may already know. So they got a new top laner called Toll2, who's been pretty good. I think he's better than Evi, in my opinion. But he they but that but then after that DFM kept most of their uh roster from last year. Steel, Area, Utapon, and then Harp. So really they kept four of the five players, and Evie, in my opinion, was the weakest player uh for DFM last last year, especially in the worlds. I think this is a pretty good team, like pretty decent team to be able to maybe pull off an upset against some better teams. Now, is PSG a better team? I'm not 100% sure because I think these teams are very evenly matched. I think PSG, on the other hand, tended to, uh, they struggled a lot um, to start the 2023 season in the spring split. They lost a lot of games, and then they brought in Junjia, who um, I'm sure some of you guys or a lot of you guys are familiar with that, that name from Edward Gaming from EEG. So Junjet now plays for PSG, for those of you who may not know that. So that 
maybe get you guys going. Maybe that will get you excited about PSG's prospects in this matchup. And it should. And you know how much I value the jungling control percentage. So you'll see um, PSG's numbers will pop off uh, compared to DFM's. So we'll see what happens there. But this is the matchup that I'm definitely going to get uh, the exposure to both teams. I think DFM definitely has what it takes to be able to pull off this upset. Now, I think they have stronger laners, but not necessarily the better jungler, whereas PSG has a better jungler, but not necessarily the better laners, right? So in the top lane, I think it's going to come down to um, Toll 2's uh, champion pool, in my opinion. I've heard a lot about uh, told to his champion pool how it's it's kind of narrow but um you know but he's a good player right right like he's, he's a solid player compared to every their previous top laner so i think that's that's what it's going to come down to in my opinion and then jungle like i said junjia should have an advantage here um and then in the mid lane is what i um want to talk about a little bit uh in depth so area i was not a believer an area when he played for in, in the LCK. Now he went to DFM last year. He struggled a little bit, but then he just started popping off, especially in the worlds. He played really well and continuing from that. Um, he's been playing really well in the spring split. As you can see, his kill participation percentage is really high. Um, I do think he is a very utility minded support minded mid laner and let you carry in the late game. And that's been the the you know the holy grail for um, winning for DFM over the years. DFM is the historic franchise in Japan and the League of Legends. They've won their regions many many years in a row consecutively. I think it's like fifteen or something something ridiculous, right? Imagine like in the LPL, LCK, LEC, LCS, like one team dominating that much, right? Like. I mean, not only that shows that DFM is dominant in that region, but also that region in itself, I think, I think is pretty weak. Um, but they did be beat, I think it's like Sagoku Gaming. Yeah, Sagoku Gaming, Sagoku, so Sagoku um, Gaming in the playoffs, and they had some good players as well. So I do think DFM is a good team. But like I said, PSG has some good player players. I think Junja is pretty good. I mean, Junja is really good. I'm sorry. Junja is really good. But I think the bottom lane, Waco and Woody, from at least from what I uh, what I saw out of their stats and metrics, Waco and Woody actually um, had a really good spring split for PSG. But I still think they're not as good as Utapan and Harp. So this is this is one one matchup I'm struggling with, as you can as you guys can tell. Junja is a good jungler, better jungler, but the rest of the team sucks compared to DFM. So let's just look at some metrics and that maybe that will sway me either way. All right. I'm going to go to Oracle Elixir as well, and I'm going to check out DFMs real quick. They're in LJL in Japan. If, it, if this loads. All right. All right. All right. So LJL spring split regular season. This is, I mean, this is a very good sizable sample right here. 35 games, 30 to 35 games. Um, jungle control percentage. That's how Steel did. Steel played really well. 53.0% for the team in the jungle. Like I said, Sengoku Gaming played really well, but DFM ended up beating them. Um, let's talk about, let's see, first to three towers. They have very, very good metric there. And goal difference, wow, look at that. That is amazing, 3,200. And then early game is amazing. They are at the top early game team in the LJL, LJL it looks like. Um, but they, and they had a pretty good mid to late game as well. They didn't fall off or anything. Um, so I think that is really good. And gold spend percentage, dominant. And CKPM, 0.85. So not as fast as G2, like I said. And then um, Team Loud, I think, was really fast as well. 
in Brazil. So let's look at DFM's maybe jungler. I just want to see real quick how um, Steel did comparatively. Oh, look at that, 2-2-2. Two, two, two. So Steel actually had a pretty good season, looks like, in the spring. Um, so let's look at um, – that tells me that – Hopefully, Steel is going to fare well against Jinja. Um, so we'll see what happens there. All right. So I think PSG um, is going to be a good maybe GPP pick, in my opinion. So I, I like DFM now that I've seen DFM stats more. I just want to quickly see, um, let's see, PSG's stats a little bit. So let's look at that real quick. PCS, I think it was. There you go. Now, I mean, give or take, I mean, these regions are not equally comparable, right? Like LJL is probably worse than PCS, in my opinion. Um, like I said, L LJL was um, run by those two teams um, with DFM and I think it was uh, Sengoku Gaming. But now PCS, um, you've, I've heard of Beyond Gaming. I've heard of Flying Oyster. I've heard of PSG Talent, obviously. So let's see how that fares. Um, yeah, I mean, you see PSG Talent leading the jungle control with Junjia. Um, fifty four point one percent. That is really good. Um, but lane control fifty one percent. First to three towers, they were okay there. Goal difference, they were really good in top two. Um, Frank Esports must have been really good too. Um, early game, top two, mid to late game, they were really good. Okay, so. Maybe they're a good team fighting team. Um, that is interesting with Jinja doing good in the early game and then mid to late game, they're um, good at team fighting. So that could be good for them. Gold spend percentage difference. They're in top two as well. But you see the CKPM, right? Like you see 0.67. I mean, this is what I'm talking about that I think this matchup between DFM and PSG is going to be much slower than the Team Loud versus G2. So I would just get a long stack of Team Loud or G2 or whatever, you know, whichever team you play in this matchup. I mean, I'm going to play a lot of G2, but so like G2 long stack and then maybe a sprinkle of short stack from this game, DFM or PSG. Um, I want to see how Junjia did um, comparatively to other junglers. So let's look at that real quick. So Husha used to start for PSG at jungle, and then he got replaced by Junja. Husha, if you if you have been playing League of Legends uh, DFS, Husha has been pretty. He was pretty good. He's still a pretty good jungler, um, but Junja is a different animal. You see Junja just dominating at two one seven eGPM. So you see Junja dominating, right? And I th and I do think he's gonna do well. But is the rest of the team going to be able to keep up with him? I don't know. Um, it's a team game, team sport, after all. So let's look at how other people did. Yeah, I mean, you see Obao. Pretty good. Three, three, 337, 275. 250 even for top. Mm. That's interesting. Top, I mean, Z has been, yeah, he's mediocre. Let's look at others, um, just out of curiosity, right? So I'm just comparing the EGPMs of all the mid laners in that region to see how Ubao fared against them. He's basically like kind of in the middle of all the mid laners. Um, so nothing like popping off, obviously. Now, AD carry though, like I said, Waco was really good, and this is what I'm talking about 337 compared to everybody else at the top. 
and this is what I was talking about. Waco and Woody was has been really was really good, has been playing really good. But are they gonna do okay against Utapon and Harp? I don't know. Utapon has been yes, he's an old guy, he's experienced. Um, so we'll see what happens there. So let's see. Yeah, I mean, I, I think <laughs> this is hard because, you know, now, like, okay, PSG strength lies with their jungler and Jinja and the bottom lane with Waco and Woody, right? And then DFM actually steal the jungler for DFM. Had pretty good metrics to be able to maybe do well against Jinja, going up against Jinja. I still think Jinja is better, but steel is not, a, you know, pushover, right? So... Maybe that will be neutralized a little bit. Now in the top lane, is Toltu going to be able to do well against Adzi? I think so. I mean, I think Toltu is better than like their previous top laner, like I said, and I think he's the reason why they've been playing really good. They, they've they been just dominating in the LJL. And then Area versus Zubao, I think Area has an advantage, but he's not much of like a carry, like assassin player right like in the especially in the international tournament like this he tends to favor like utility champions and then in the bottom lane utapon and harp yeah i mean they have a history of playing together well um but going up against in form waco and woody i don't know this is a hard one okay this is a hard one but just given the fact that steel actually had a really good jungling form and the uh, other laners are really good comparatively compared to PSG's counterparts, especially in the top lane and the mid lane. I'm going to pick DFM to win over PSG. Um, but I'm going to have exposure to both of them. Now, PSG has a definitely, a, a definitely has a really good recipe for winning with a really elite jungler and really great bottom lane, which two of those like positions... Um, on the on the map in the game that I favor the most, but top lane, mid lane, and jungle, like I said, Steel has been pretty good, so maybe he'll surprise me. Um, and in the bottom lane, Utapon and Harp are very experienced, so that's why I'm picking DFM to win two to one. Um, I think I'm just rambling at this at the time and now because I just feel like it can go either way. Um, like I said, it's a very interesting matchup here today. Um, but in the other matchup, I definitely know that G2 is probably going to win. So that's what I'm going to go with G2 and then DFM and then maybe some PSG for GPP. So that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys have any questions or want me to dig into anything further, deeper, let me know. And I'll be back tomorrow to talk about the one sided matchup that will be for BLG over Movie Star and movie star and then the next matchup will be interesting as well between gam esports and golden guardians so until then i hope you guys um enjoy these matchups with league of legends is back um please uh reach out to me if you guys have any questions if you like the video please hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel until then see you later bye bye